So in a previous tutorial, I showed some of the number guessing game uh, logic in a flowchart. Let's go ahead and look at the JavaScript code for such a game. There's a number of ways, no pun intended, to program a number guessing game. This is just one structure that could be used. So to start off with, um, first of all, I want to have a head peg in here, an HTML, and then a head peg closing head tag. There we are. Now it's more proper and that would actually have a chance of validating now. All right. So in our uh, HTML, we don't actually have very much HTML going on here. I'll go ahead and highlight. There we go. So we have a section. That section we'll go ahead and call game area. And I want to go ahead and place all that content for the game, the display, into one section and then I could center it or format that easily by using my style sheets. I have on line 10 here in output area. It's going to be um, generated, uh, written to by using inner HTML. So all I need there is a class or an ID and then I can reference that by using query selector or get element by ID. Uh, the next line, well the next important line, line 12, is where I have the user be able to type in their input text. So you have to have an input button. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to have an input text field and then also a button. So actually, I'll go ahead and set a size to this. And I'll say 12 pixels. It should be plenty for them to type. All they need to do is type a number. And then a break, so there's a carriage return. And then I'll have the actual button. And we'll have the, uh, the button with a ID number, so I can reference that if necessary. But really, uh, it'll just be triggered by, uh, by the on click. And you click on it, and then it will call the main function. And down below in my code is a function called main. So that's the end of the HTML. Let's go ahead and go look at the logic. So to start off with, I want to generate a random number. I'm going to go ahead and have it be a smaller number than 50. For testing purposes, there's no reason to have it be that high. Um, and then you don't want to have the number guess uh, be generated. Let me word it this way. You don't, have, you don't want to have the random number being generated inside the function. You don't want to have it be regenerated every time that the user makes a guess, right? Because each time that the user makes a guess, they want to be getting closer and closer to guessing that random number that was generated. And they want to have, you know, five or six tries or whatever to guess that number. And if they, if that number keeps changing, then it won't be fair. They'll always only have like a 1 in 10 or a 1 in 50 chance of actually getting it. So we want to um, generate that random number outside of a function, okay? at least in this case. That's how I want to do it. The other thing is that um, I'm going to create a variable for user guess and a variable for total guesses. User guess will hold what they guessed. Total guesses will keep track of the number of times that they've made a guess. And we'll just keep reiterating, keep adding to that each time they call the function. Now this is referencing the object. That's referencing the button object up there. I'll go ahead and scroll up so we can see that. Right here is the player button ID. I can reference that. And there's this great JavaScript property called disabled. And if you set it to true, it disables the button. You actually can't click on it to run a function. We'll set that to false to start off with. That means that it is abled, so the users can use it to run their function. Very cool. Uh, line 32, line 33, we're just referencing. We're, 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 we're getting the information from those text fields. Right here, I use query selector. You could use input, excuse me, you could use get element by ID if you want. Uh, query selector works just as well. It works with class as well as with ID. So we'll go ahead and use that for now. We'll get the information that the user typed into the input text field, and we'll store that in the variable called player input. On line 33, this is where we're going to um, uh, create a variable that we can store our output to. All right. Down here in our main function, let me go ahead and add uh, some spacing here so we can see that in its full. This is the main body of the function. So line 41, we'll want to keep adding one to total guess every time the user makes a guess. So you see that? That's how we actually keep track of the total guesses and if they exceed their amount. Uh, line 42, you want to accept that input um, with the uh, variable input. 
uh, you actually reference it by saying input.value. Okay, so you can look at that code a little closer if you need to re re rewind the video and go back up there. But basically, if you don't use dot value, if you don't have that property there, uh, it's not going to reference it properly. So line 42, we get the input dot value, the value of the input text field, store that in uh, the variable called user guess. Now we can compare things, all right? Um, Oh, and lastly, there's the parse integer right there. So it's converting it to a number, just making sure they actually type a number. If they type the word one, like O-N-E to guess the number one, uh, it wouldn't be able to work with that. You would actually get not a number. And so there could be error checking that you can do with that. But right now we'll go ahead and just um, convert it, assuming that they're playing, uh, playing by the rules. Okay, line 44, uh, we're just checking to see if user guess is greater than com computer number. If it is, then let them know they guess too high. Um, line 48, if their number is lower than the computer number, we let them know that by letting them know it's too low. And then if they've got it, then we would let them know in the inner HTML that by Jove, you have got that number. So at this point, it's a pretty pretty basic game, but it follows the standards from that flowchart. There's a couple other things that we can add, and we'll do that in just a little bit.